Welcome everybody to Championship Soccer Stadium at Orange County Great Park in beautiful Irvine, California. It is time for some NISA soccer action. Tonight we have the home team, Los Angeles Force, hosting the, visitor, hosting the visiting team, Club de Leon. Art Takari along with Dennis Pope, proud to be bringing you tonight's play-by-play -play live on FIFA Plus via TV Max. Now Dennis, we're getting ready for this matchup and... You know, LA Force is coming off a game that didn't go to plan at all against the Savannah Clovers. And Club de Leon, they've obviously, they're not world beaters in this, you know, during this season so far. But this is another one of those scary matchups. And what, what's your response when I say another one of those scary matchups? Well, certainly LA Force can trip up here and drop points. And that is not at all what is on the minds of the LA Force players tonight, to be honest. They want to take full three points, they're angry a little PO'd about what happened last week still. So they're motivated to come out here and show uh, Club de Leon for the third time this season at Championship Stadium who the better team is. And they definitely have everything working in their favor. I mean, home cooking, you got to like that. I mean, yes, I'm going to say this more than once. You know, they got to come out here tonight in full force. I mean, why, how, why is it taking me that long to say that? That's a good question. I guess I got so used to the whole Star Wars reference, but I got to move away from that. The homestand that the Force have had here at Championship Stadium this past month may or may not hinge on the result here tonight. They had a good result uh, several weeks ago. The last week's result, not so good. And so if they don't come out and show that they're about three points tonight, you know, this, this whole homestand and this run toward, uh, you know, playoff contention may be for not. Um, they have to, you know, get maximum points from here on out. And... There is no reason why they should expect anything less tonight. And now, when talking about Club de Leon, this has not been ideal for them. I had to, you know, do my homework and, you know, do some searching and searching. You know, I wasn't, like, doing research for a paper or things like that. But last win, the 8th of July, 4-2 at City Union. I mean, this team, this is a team that's hungry for a win, and this is another reason why these kinds of matchups are tricky and scary at the same time. Yeah, you know, Club de Leon's come all the way to the West Coast. They're not about to just lay over for LA Force. So, yeah. Kickoff is coming soon, but first, the playing of our national anthem.
we are moments away from kickoff. As we said earlier, a crucial game for the Los Angeles Force. Obviously, what's on their mind is that they want to they want to, you know, book that playoff spot where they, you know, where they go straight to the semifinals. They want to be in one of the top two spots. But at the same time, there's also got to be that mindset of don't focus on the standings and instead just focus on the opponent that you're going to be playing against. Again, yeah, if you can win your individual battles, I've said this before, that's what you should focus on come, come the, you know, first whistle. Can you beat your man? Can you run past your man? Can you pass past your man? You know, can you do the little things, right, to propel your team forward? That's some, what's on everybody's mind right now. So some changes in the LA Force starting lineup. It's a, I think it's a favorable, a pretty good lineup, but there's also some notable absences from the roster tonight. I think that will have an effect on how LA Force is able to move the ball and, you know, be creative, especially, you know, out on the wings or at the attacking midfield position. Yep, no Francis Avoce. No Diego Casillas, two guys have been the engine of this attack here this last two months for the LA Force. Not in the lineup at all tonight, not even on the substitutes bench. So uh, it'll be a different look from LA Force tonight. Again, it's Ho Jorge, so I'm sorry, I apologize. Yeah, Jose Sosa, right, the, the new addition. Um, brand new on the uh, 29th he was signed by LA Force, a guy out of UCLA, um, an Argentinian, and he'll play up top, um, trying to mix it up with Aldo Quintanilla and see you know, if they can, if they can push forward because Quintanilla has had goals this season. Can Sosa you know, do some of the things that either Casillas or Avoche were doing? We'll see. And we just took a look at the Club de Leon starting lineup, and this is a team that, has, that also has brought in some new faces as well. And when you bring in some new faces, it's, you know, that makes it more difficult to scout this team. So, you know, bottom line is, I think we're, gonna, I think we're in for an entertaining match tonight. Club de Leon has had their struggles, but they know, how to, they, they, know how, they know how to do things right. They know how to frustrate their opponents, that's for sure. Yeah, they're, they're starting four players listed as amateurs tonight uh, with Victor Rojas, number 10, pulling the strings in the middle of the field. So it'll be interesting to see their formation coming out and to see how they try to attack LA Force. And just from the start, as we're waiting for the LA Force to, you know, do their pregame chant, uh, you know, two, four, six, eight, you know, let's go for it. I mean, I actually, I, I can't even remember what, what we would say before a game, to be honest. I had to come up with something. But, it could, but just from a first look, it appears that we will see Club de Leon playing with three center backs. And just for those, so a couple of those center backs, of course, Edgar Guzman, Sean Sharma, and also keep an eye on number five, Matteo Borelli. You know, he might just be, you know, he could be playing as a center back at times, but it could also push up as a defensive midfielder as well. And if we're gonna see Club de Leon give some different looks, this is very similar to what the LA Force does as well. And there is the whistle. We are underway from Championship Soccer Stadium at Orange County Great Park in Irvine, California. Eric Viatoro wearing the captain's armband tonight. Something else to point out for the LA Force, obviously a sigh of relief for the LA Force supporters to see Edwin Rivas back in at the left back position. And even more so Brandon Gomez back between the pipes, missing from last week's game against Clovers. Joel oh. Serrano is the backup keeper tonight. And we take a look at the midfielders for LA Force, Leopoldo Placencia Hernandez, Justin Jobel looking to be the, appear to be the two defensive holding midfielders. Not a surprise, but we also do see uh, Jose Sosa playing as a central, uh, central midfield position, but expect him to go out wide at times. Like we said, Matt Morse is known for showing different looks. You know, he does not, doesn't like to be very predictable. And that was Edgar Guzman intercepting Intercepting the pass, momentarily Agustin Ortiz, Matias Mercado with a quick touch. Early on, looks like both teams having a little bit of trouble maintaining possession in the middle third of the pitch. Agustin Ortiz very quickly to Matias Mercado. Looks like it is those two men that will be doing a lot of the dirty work in, in midfield for Club de Leon. Now it is Victor Rojas pushing it out wide towards Luis Teran. He's actually one of the new additions to this team as well, too. A native of Venezuela. So a lot of South American players on this Club de Leon roster. That's the flavor that Club de Leon's been looking for. 
there's a lot of talent in South Florida, Central Florida, when it comes to South American players. Ivan Hernandez, one of the center backs along with Clayton Tor. And of course, Via Toro playing as the right back wearing the captain's armband, actually brought down, will be a free kick for the LA Force. Looks like that time it appears that the foul might have been committed. I was about to say by, yeah, actually, Aragon, Christian Aragon. Hard to miss, hard to miss with that with the bleached hair. Flipping Via Toro on the ankle. That's painful. Yeah, I think if we see a few more of those, he could definitely expect to get himself in the book. Yeah, coming in late like that is never a good look. So Ivan Hernandez takes the free kick. Ball is back in the play. Edwin Rivas. Momentarily was Quintanilla. Rivas once again. He'll go anywhere on the pitch. He's not just going to be, he's not one of those players who's going to stick to his same spot and same position. He likes to move around as well. Yeah, is he a left back? Is he a winger? Is he a center mid? He's Edwin Rivas. Yeah, he, he, he knows what he's doing, and he knows, he's, he knows his guys are going to cover him if, wherever it is he goes. Luis Tehran intercepting the pass, looking for an option. And looks like he might be losing that battle. Almost lost it to Ronaldo Lamelli. Yes, he did. And now Echevarria brought down. Will be a free kick for the LA Force. Early on, Club de Leon not afraid to play the man. In fact, I feel as if they are more comfortable playing the man instead of the ball. Justin Jovel did a great job right there in that battle with Tehran. Not a surprise. If it's, you know, if Club de Leon wants to establish, you know, establish their mark on this game, set the tone by being physical, th you know, that's something that they're going to, that, that might be something they're very comfortable with doing. But it's at well, the same time, they got to make sure not to give up too many set piece opportunities. Yep, it's one way to do it, but there is a consequence. That's Edwin Rivas' left foot here, perhaps. And a good job from Ronaldo Lomelli to win that battle against Luis Tehran. Where will Rivas put this ball? Could have done better. Cleared out. Club de Leon having to push up to clear their lines. Via Toro finds Rivas. And like you said earlier, Rivas decides to go wherever he wants. Now could be a good opportunity. Quintanilla, can he bring it down? It's high up into the air, headed out. Ortiz trying to get to it, turning and shooting. Yes, it actually went in the net, but hold on. Whistle is blown. There was a foul. Will be a free kick for Leon. Foul against Quintanilla, looks like. Nice replay. Or perhaps oh. actually it was Sosa. Sosa, yep, in the back. Easy call for the official. No, no bit of controversy here. And there is the keeper for Leon. His name was Josue Mazon, but they call him Sway. Actually, previously had a stint with the Kansas City Comets in um, of indoor soccer. Actually, you know. So, what's what's your take on that? When you have a keeper who's played indoor soccer, the major arena soccer league, you have to be very technical in that league. I'm expecting him to be very good on the floor, very good in his distribution. Agustin Ortiz plays it back to Sean Sharma. That's Edgar Guzman. Ball finds its way back to Sharma. The LA Force players not in the mood to press early on. Sharma has plenty of space, plenty of time. He elects to switch the field. Off the head of Rivas. Quintanilla momentarily wanted to slow it down. Almost was able to get past Matias Cruz, and he did. And Quintanilla still has it, but this time, Matteo Borelli with a slide tackle. But a foul just right before that, the official elected to play advantage. Will be another free kick for the LA Force for the men in black. It's good refereeing right there, letting the play continue and then bringing it back once there was no further advantage to be gained. Yeah, it's very easy to just be trigger happy with the whistle, but when you do that, you're gonna start frustrating a lot of players, especially when you're not gonna be consistent. Via Toro, his pass, good work from Agustin Ortiz to slide and get into the way of that passing lane. You know, it's wor it's the work, it's that kind of work that goes unnoticed a lot. Yeah, that's the dirty work from Ortiz. Club de Leon's gonna need plenty of that though. It's a long game here, we're just in the seventh minute now. We 
Victor Rojas, we've not heard his name called, we've not heard his number called too many times tonight. Did have a stint with the Las Vegas Lights, also had a stint overseas in Portugal. Sean Sharma finds Luis Tehran, was looking for Aragon, broken up by Eric Viatoro. Brandon Gomez not wasting any time. The touch from Echevarria. Sharma plays it all the way back to Mazon. And not many options on the bench tonight for this Lyon squad. Kind of reminds us a little bit of what we just saw recently when LA Force hosted the Savannah Clovers. I was going to say, reminds me of last week against Clovers. They brought two substitutions. How many we got on the bench today for Club de Lyon? I want to say it's the, basically at two or three. Borelli to Rojas. Early on, Leon not able to really put together a lot of passes in a row. They have not tested, they've not been able to test Brandon Gomez yet. We're only in the, we're only in the ninth minute. Of course, we got to see how this game develops. We got to wait and see how much more this game will open up. But overall, early on, we do see Leon being comfortable, being a little bit more physical. Now Lamelli with a nice move, has plenty of speed down the right flank, cuts it back, thinking for a moment he was going to cross it. Lays it back off to Toro, back to Lomelli. Toro, the captain once again, the cross. The half volley from Matias Cruz. Leopoldo Placencia Hernandez plays it back to Justin Jovel. Jovel, of course, playing as a def holding defensive midfielder. I'm not expecting him to move up too much today. Lomelli's ball, nice dummy play from Sosa. Almost got the ball back. Already seen some creativity early on in the giveaway. That one going straight to Ronaldo Lamelli, and he's brought down. But actually, the referee says play on. Lamelli not agreeing. Lamelli's pulled down by his collar there. Still a little bit upset about it, but can't expect every whistle to go your way. Matias Cruz, one of the three center backs we see tonight for Lyon. Last week against Clovers, Clovers very comfortable absorbing possession, absorbing threat from LA Force until they finally picked their spot, kind of lulled Force to sleep. And I think we can expect the same from Lyon today. If this game drags on being scoreless for a while, that's definitely going to be in their favor. I mean, LA Force don't want to call them a team that's don't want to say that they have a habit of being impatient, but you know they want to get they want to get out early. They want to get up. They want to get in the lead, they want to, you know, put that ball in the back of the net, you know, set the tone. And early on, the, clearly the better team with the majority of possession, majority of run to play. Yeah, it's a little early to say. It reminds us of the last week, but there's some, some tones here at the moment. The pass from Tor looking for Edwin Rivas. We have played 10 minutes. We still remain scoreless between the LA Force and Club de Leon. This is Nisa soccer action. Live on FIFA Plus, brought to you by TVE Max, Art of Takari, along with Dennis Pope, proud to be bringing you tonight's play-by-play. -play. That's a good pass from Lomelli to Toro. The cross, easy one for the guy they call Sway. Didn't necessarily make it look easy. I don't think he got the best read on that. Not a whole lot of pressure being applied from force either. A lot of this so far from Club de Leon. But not a whole lot of high pressure being applied from either team at the moment either. Agustin Ortiz. Gets the ball to Matias Cruz. And that's a long ball from Cruz. He's looking for Aragon. Could this be trouble? Brandon Gomez forced to come out and clear the ball all the way to the other end of the pitch. And now a little bit of trouble. For a moment, it did look like a little bit of danger. Borelli, I want to say, might have obstructed Sosa a little bit. Obviously, the referee was not going to blow the whistle for that. Ortiz to Luis Terran. Now it's Sharma. Should be an easy one, almost for Tor. That's a nice header to bring it down. Could this be a shot on goal? Nice readjustment and play from Clayton Tor. 
to force that one out of bounds. He tried to save it. He tried to keep it from going out of bounds for a corner kick, but it will be a corner kick actually for Leon. And actually, um, that's the first one of the night. That saved a almost certain shot. So Tor did good work there in preventing. See how they work the corner. Look for some of these tall center backs to be in the penalty area to try and get to these 50 to this 50-50 ball headed away by Rivas. LA Force players want to clear their lines. Rivas sends it up towards Sosa. Luis Tehran, last one to get a touch. Lomelli to Leopoldo Placencia Hernandez. Might be a little bit of confusion. Lomelli able to keep it in. Feeling the pressure from Christian Aragon. Former UC Riverside teammates, Polo Placencia. Ronaldo Lomelli. An all Big West Conference midfield actually for LA Forest, Justin Jovel, Cal State Fullerton product. Definitely some local boys in the lineup, gotta love it. Toro taking the pass from Ivan Hernandez. Now Ronaldo Lomelli. He's made plenty of appearances this season for LA Force off the bench. Nice to see him in the starting lineup tonight. See what he can bring to this LA Force squad. Edwin Rivas to Justin Jovel. Not too much pressing tonight from Leon. Sosa not able to get the touch he wanted. It's given away. It's Matias Mercado passing it back to Sean Sharma. A long ball finds its way to Rojas. Now here come Leon on the move. That's Matias Cruz. Will he be able to get the cross he wants? The header going just a bit wide from Matias Mercado. A good move, some good build up play from Leon. We haven't seen much of it, but finally did. Some good first touches lead to a shot that is narrow of the post there. Club de Leon unlucky, perhaps. And that was a free header for Matias. That was actually a free header for Matias Burain. And that one, that was a good cross from Matias Cruz on the right side. From one Matias to another. And three players with the first name Matias to be exact in this starting lineup tonight for Club de Leon. Gomez just walking the ball out here. Eventually does do something with it. Off the head of Sharma, but it goes straight to Santiago Echevarria. Via Toro. Trying to get it back to Echevarria. Broken up nicely. Agustin Ortiz to Victor Rojas. Actually takes a long shot as he saw Brandon Gomez off his line. Not sure what Victor Rojas was thinking. Maybe lately, he's, maybe lately he had been watching highlights of the 1970 World Cup when Pele tried to score from midfield against the old Czechoslovakia. Did, didn't go in, but he came close. He must not be too familiar with Brandon Gomez's game. Some physical play continues here. Yeah, this time looks like we're seeing, I think it's, I want to say it's Ronaldo Lomelli down this time. So hold on a moment, says the official. So one of our first um, stoppages of the game. And yes, it was Ronaldo Lamelli. Clattered into the back of. Arriva has to take the throw in. We'll go all the way back to the keeper, maybe. Yeah. yeah, actually gives it back to Leon. Nice display of sportsmanship. Mazon to Sean Sharma. It's 
So he has the three center backs for Lyon, Edgar Guzman, Matteo Borelli, and Sean Sharma. They're definitely gonna have their hands full tonight against the LA Force. Have not had the best results against the LA Force, but being very familiar with this Force team, obviously they've had to have made some, kind of, some kinds of adjustments entering tonight's match. Those games are months ago, so how much of that still is in effect? You know, how much of that game plan can you carry over considering the changes to LA Force? And good move roster. from Matias Cruz, the cross, the shot, good block. Now once again, that was a shot for Matias Burain, but a foul behind the play. Surprised that the official did not allow the advantage to continue. That's a little cynical art. What? You're expecting a non-call? Well, I mean, they had they could have been on the move for a, for a good counterattack opportunity. I'm just saying. Yeah, Edwin Rivas to Aldo Quintanilla. Taken away. We definitely are seeing Matias Cruz uh, creating trouble on that far you know, on the right side of the pitch, playing as the right back. Yeah, very involved. Club de Leon so far. Sean Sharma's pass almost was a dangerous one, but does go to Agustin Ortiz. Placencia from behind pokes it away. Echevarria, nice dummy play from Sosa to let the ball get to Ronaldo Lamelli. He's got space, he's got room. His pass actually broken up by Matteo Borelli. Now Christian Aragon with a quick touch. Luis Teran back to Sharma. Leon will look to reset and regroup. Now it's Purain for a moment. Now Justin Jova brought down from behind. Easy call for the official. Will be a free kick for the force. The question here is will we finally see someone getting into the book? And we hear the official say no more of that. He's given that final warning. Any more, any, any more fouls like that? Yes, that will result in a booking. And we do have a man down for the LA Force. The trainer, Gabriel Torricelli, comes onto the pitch. Yeah, not a good challenge from Victor Rojas. Prevented what may have been a promising attack though. And to be honest, when you look back at the foul, I know afterwards we heard the official saying no more of that, but I think that was definitely grounds for a booking. This will definitely add some stoppage time for the first half. Trainer's got the magic spray out. And from here it appears to be, I want to say, yeah, Justin Jovel. Obviously Matt Morse would not be thrilled to have to make a substitution this early in the match. Jovel was motoring through midfield when he was hacked down by Rojas. We've seen a lot of good possession so far from Forrest, but no final product. I think Club de Leon may have been a little unlucky down at their end not to have scored off a set piece. No, that wasn't a set piece. It was a cross in from the right side. And uh, like we said earlier, yeah, it was a free header for Matias Burain. From when you saw the ball go off his head, you're just wondering you're expecting to see the ball hit the corner of the net. Fortunately for the LA Force, it did not go in. So we do have a free kick for the LA Force. Will this one be put on net? From here, it looks like it's going to be Aldo Quintanilla. 40, 40 ish yards from goal. And whistle is blown. And here it comes. He did go for goal, but did not come very close. Goal kick for Leon. Fortune favors the bold. Unfortunately for Quintanilla, this kick was well left. And we see the, the attackers on the pitch for Leon. It appears to be Victor Rojas, Matias Burain, and Christian Aragon. 
So I want to say at times we're look, we're seeing a three. It looks like we're basically we're seeing a three four three formation, and that pass intercepted. Sosa brought down from behind. Will be another free kick for the force. And that time it was Edgar Guzman whistle for the foul. And you just know sooner or later, I mean, just eventually, someone has got to get themselves in the book. Earlier I said that Leon looked more comfortable playing the man instead of playing the ball. It looks like that trend is continuing. Now nearly taken away, it was poked away by Matias Burain, which caused Clayton Tor to have to just send it out of bounds. And it's, it's those kinds of situations, it's those kinds of moments in the middle third of the pitch. Look for Club de Leon to keep on doing what they're doing. You know, catch LA4 snapping, whatever it is you want to call it. LA Force has got to be a little more mindful. Got to definitely raise that awareness and not be so careless. Sent out of bounds by Borelli. The quick throw in taken by Quintanilla to Sosa. Sosa will be held onto it a little too long. Agustin Ortiz brought down from behind. Easy call for the official. Free kick for Leon. Club De Leon out to set a physical tone tonight. I think you're absolutely right about that. And at times I think this physical play can be frustrating for the LA Force. Not to say the LA Force doesn't know how to play physical, but it's definitely not uh, you know, part of their, of their tactics or their strategy. They've attempted to be more technical this season, bringing on players like Avoche and Diego Casillas, and has brought up the level of their technical ability. We don't have to see LA Force be as physical Well, it will be adjustment tonight because Force is not shy of about getting into people. And that ball going straight to Edwin Rivas. You know, it's a little bit, I have to wonder, you know, sometimes I have no choice but to question some of the tactics of this Leon squad. You know, just sending the ball at the pitch, go straight to Edwin Rivas. You know, you're going to want to, you need to keep possession. You need to move the ball around. You know, you want to wear down, you know, from the, speaking from the standpoint of Leon, you want to wear down your opponent. You just get the ball straight to Edwin Rivas. You know, he's gonna, he's, he knows what to do with it. Jovel taking the pass from Lomeli back to Jovel. It's a nice give and go play. That one knocked out of bounds by Christian Aragon. Jovel wanted to take the throw in quickly to get the ball to Viatoro. Instead, leaves it for Ronaldo Lomeli. Now, Echevarria with the cross. Nobody in front to knock it in. But actually it did take a deflection. Throw in for the force, Rivas faking the cross. Still has it. Tried to get past his man, broken up nicely. Matias Mercado unable to get the touch he wanted. Echevarria brought down. The official says play on. Echevarria not happy about the non-call. Christian Aragon with a nice cheeky move to Luis Teran. Now Agustin Ortiz, is this the move that Leon has been looking for? It's Victor Rojas. Will he be able to get a shot off trying to cut it back? He did attempt to cross it. Nice defensive play from Clayton Tor. Will be a corner kick for the men in red. Tor's been doing a great job tonight in coverage. We're starting tonight for typical center back and captain Dex Kynan. It looks like it will be Victor Rojas to take the corner kick. In swinger. These set piece opportunities could always be dangerous. This is, might be what the moment Leon is waiting for. Here comes the corner. Some traffic in the net. Some actually some confusion from some of the Club de Leon players. Went right to Brandon Gomez. No danger. Now back the other way as the ball was cleared. Not too much trouble for these Leon defenders. Sean Sharma plays it back to Mazon. Victor Rojas to Matias Cruz, looking for Matias Mercado, brought down by Leopoldo Placencia. Whistle is blown, will be a free kick for Leon. Now looks like we are seeing Borelli pushing up a bit to the defensive midfield role. Sharma to Mercado. Fake the pass to Borelli. Plays it back to Sharma. Sharma to Tehran. 
Nice play from Jose Sosa momentarily. Luis Teran takes a throw in. Sharma to Edgar Guzman. Agustin Ortiz to Rojas. Rojas wearing the number 10 shirt. That's a good ball towards Aragon. But Brandon Gomez, of course, always alert in his penalty area. Rojas attempted to pull the strings, though. He's the one who can pick a pass. Almost found one to Aragon there. But Brandon Gomez always quick off his line. So at times we see this Lyon team playing a 5 for one formation. Right now, Purain playing as a lone striker. And that makes and that leaves Aragon playing as a left midfielder. And the two central midfielders, Matias Mercado, Agustin Ortiz. Victor Rojas at times looking like a right winger or perhaps even a right midfielder. Like I said earlier, not surprised to see some of these different looks from both teams. You know, both teams trying to you know, win this chess match. Only force looking to build here. Nice and patient. And when we see a back five for Leon, that bring that means we see Luis Teran come from a left wing position to a you know to a, basically a left wing back position to provide support. And Matias Cruz, of course. Dangerous as always, as we've seen so far, as at the right back position. We'll have to keep an eye, keep our eyes on the on the you know keep our eyes on the wing backs of Lyon to see you know to see how often they push up. That's where the spaces will be created. The only force have to continue to be patient here. So we see a 5-4-1 from Lyon when they're on defense, but obviously on the attack, quickly changed to a 3-4-3. Matias Cruz stepping up to knock that one out of bounds. We're in the 30th minute of play. We remain scoreless between the LA Force and Club de Leon. This is Nisa Soccer Action, live on FIFA Plus, brought to you by TV Max. Art of Takari, along with Dennis Pope, proud to be bringing you tonight's play-by-play. -play. We are at Championship Soccer Stadium in Irvine, California. Echevarria surrounded by three red shirts. He obviously had to do something with it. We know he's capable of making things happen, but not going to be easy when you got three guys on you. Yep, trying to force it isn't going to work tonight, it doesn't appear. No pun intended, I assume. You caught that. Well played. Justin Jovel to Lomeli. And earlier before this game started, let's see, wait a, mo wait a moment, that's actually Rivas, but the flag did come up. I was just about to say, before the game started, we talked about players like Francis Avose and Diego Casillas not being available, and I think we're, we're seeing the effects of those. Not saying this in any kind of, um, you know, disrespectful way, anything like that, but when you're in this kind of situation, you know, what is it you're going to be looking for? You know, what is it the force are planning to do when they're missing some of their big playmakers? Like you said, the motors of their team. Right, I, I think it's easy to see what they look for when Francis Avoche is on the field. You've got a big, tall center forward as a target. And Diego C Casillas is an outlet uh, on the right side, typically. Uh, tonight, you know, those positions aren't being, you know, like for like substituted. Sosa has brought in more of a, a 10 positional sense, you know, uh, center attacking mid who alternates with the, with the wing players, which is sort of what Casillas can do. But Casillas is more of a traditional wing. So it's yeah, it's it's a different formation with different players with different skill sets. And right now, and just before, you know, before the foul, right now Rivas is, was just brought down, will be a free kick for the LA Force. Uh, what we just saw you know, a few minutes ago when Rivas pushed up, he was whistled for offside. I think we got an answer to one of our questions that Rivas is gonna have to take some chances. He's gonna have he's gonna want to push up a few a few times to see if he can be that you know to be that guy to make that to get that final touch yeah he'll have to make some runs and get it into the attack perhaps to play that final ball in for someone like Quintanilla or Echeverria Agustin Ortiz 
Lost possession, and yes, he's the first one to get himself in the book tonight. This one coming in the 32nd minute. The official made it clear earlier and said no more of that. Agustin Ortiz has been given the first booking of the night. Amarillo. Yep, the fouls are piling up for Club de Leon. So whether or not that was, you know, a studs up challenge or that was perhaps persistent infringement up to the referee. But yeah, either way, first card, first caution. <laughs> Edwin Rivas, it's a player you don't want to give a lot of space to. Can always make some things happen. Now that the Placencia gives that one straight to Matias Purain, fortunately for the force, able to take possession back. But it's those moments, those kinds of, um, it's those giveaways, you know, that fortunately from what we just saw, didn't result in anything. But those are the, it's those kinds of giveaways that can, you know, come back, come back to bite yeah, you. They will be absolutely come back to bite if you turn the ball over carelessly in midfield. Borrego brought down. Actually, correction, that's actually, yeah, Borelli brought down. Edgar Guzman swings it over to Sean Sharma. And Sharma's pass broken up by Justin Jovel nicely. The LA Force on the move on the counterattack. Sosa. Plays it to the outside to Quintanilla. Might have been better to get to Echevarria. Still Quintanilla. Will he be able to bring it back? It's poked away nicely. Possession taken away. And that's one play we'll have to look back at a little in a little bit when we get the chance on the replay. Pretty sure Sosa did not make the right decision. But here come Leon. Footwork just wasn't good enough from Quintanilla either. And that cross broken up by Clayton Tor. Quickly looks for Jose Sosa. Got to like the vision from Clayton Tor. Always with a good ball out of the back. Sosa to Justin Jovel. Jovel getting it back from Leopoldo Placencia Hernandez. Now it's Lamelli to Via Toro. And right now when we take a look at what the LA Force is doing, Lomelli at times could you know, basically play as a central midfielder, but now we're seeing him out wide as a winger. And that's not surprising because he has the speed to create trouble on the flanks. And we've seen him both centrally out on the wing and out on the wing this season. So it's clear he's comfortable in both. And when we take a look at what the Force has arranged in terms of formation on the pitch, they look comfortable playing. I wanted to say initially, a f sometimes it alternates from a 4-4-2 to sometimes a 4-4-1-1. You know, we see Sosa playing as a, you know, basically as a false nine right. behind Echevarria, or you know, he's playing as one of the one of the forwards along with Echevarria. Whatever it is that Matt Morris is trying to do, however, he's trying to confuse his opponents. Nice move from Matias Mercado. Clayton Torres stepping up nicely. He's been, he basically sent the message to Leon. You guys want to play physical? I know how to play physical too. Here come the LA Force. Don't have the majority of numbers. And brought down from behind. Will we see another booking? Will it be Edgar Guzman to get himself in the book? Yes, that's exactly what just, what just took place in the 36th minute. Referee waiting to show his cards until full half hour has been shown. There were opportunities early in this match to show cards and perhaps limit the casualties here. But I think it's going to get more physical from this point forward. The referee will do, have to do more to keep control of this match because we're seeing fouls consistently on every, both sides of the field on every time down. So it will be a free kick for the LA Force. We see more, more players wearing black. Pushing up into the, pushing towards the Lyon penalty area. Edwin Rivas to whip this one to the penalty area with his left foot. A good flick touch from Clayton Tor, but no one else able to capitalize or pounce on the ball. 
Yeah, goes right to my zone. For a center back, that was pretty sweet. A little heel flick from Tor. He almost caught keeper sleeping a little. Time is winding down in this first half, and of course it's these minutes that end up being very crucial. If either team is, whatever team is able to score in these last minutes of the first half, that could really change the momentum in this match. Of course, if it's LA Force to get the goal, you know, they'll be continuing playing, they'll, they'll continue playing with the momentum because obviously they've been the better team tonight. Aragon, after taking the pass from Tehran, plays it back to Agustin Ortiz. Ortiz almost got it back from Mercado, broken up. That's Jose Sosa, switches the field. He finds Quintanilla, and that could be a good ball for Jovo. He brings it down, kicks it up, and it goes just a bit wide. What a finish that would have been had he been able to get that one into the back of the net. Opportunity there from Justin Jovo to score his first goal for LA Force. Very nearly caught the keeper off his line. What an opportunity there that was. And when we take a look at the formation, the personnel on the field, on the pitch for the force, we see Quintanilla playing as a left midfielder, Lomeli as a right midfielder, and of course, the central midfielders, Jovel and Placencia Hernandez. And of, like we said earlier, we do see Sosa playing in that false nine role behind Echevarria. That seems to be, those seem to be the two alternating formations we see from Matt Morse. Now it's Matias Burain, maintains possession, that's a good ball to Tehran. The touch from Tehran, easy one for Brandon Gomez. Not sure where he wanted to, not sure where he wanted to put that ball. Did he want to center that one? Said almost kind of looked like a shot, but obviously not any trouble for Brandon Gomez. LA Force now the other way on the counterattack. Jose Sosa to Quintanilla. Quintanilla had a little bit of trouble with his touches and actually gives it right to Borelli. Now it's Matias. Burain needs help, cuts it back. Will he want to take a shot? And it was Rojas unable to maintain possession. Now here comes Edwin Rivas. He has a lot of space, decided to actually slow it down a bit. I think that makes sense. Sally Force not really having the numbers advantage this, at this part of the pitch. Or much luck when they hurry tonight. It's better that they attempt to build. Find those spaces, Club de Leon's back line. And I think we've seen already that Club de Leon's back line is prone to a mistake or two. Sosa coming all the way back to find the ball. And I think with Lomelli in the lineup, it provides that opportunity for Eric Viatora to push up while Lomelli can stay back and play as the right wing back. It's not his favorite position to be playing, but he's definitely capable of playing that position. He does it well. And Aragon was looking for Purain, headed away nicely by Clayton Tor. Luis Terran to Agustin Ortiz. A nice touch. <clears throat> to Matias Cruz. Plays it back to Edgar Guzman. Now Matias Mercado. Once again to Ortiz. Mercado and Ortiz definitely doing a lot of the dirty work in midfield. That long ball intended for Luis Terran, headed away by Villatoro to Lamelli. Borelli brings it down with a very nice subtle touch. Victor Rojas. Was looking for an option, not in the mood to force anything. They've played over 40 minutes. We're in the 42nd minute of play. We remain scoreless between the LA Force and Club de Lyon. Will we see one of these teams find that go-ahead goal in the dying minutes of the first half? We've seen a few of them this season already. They've been game changers. There's actually quite a bit of games that I've been involved with calling where, I've, where it basically became the norm to actually happen over and over. We also went through a stint where we were seeing red cards on 
quite the frequency. That sort of slowed down as well. And definitely better in terms of, you know, the quality and entertainment of these matches. You know, one team falls, you know, you know, to playing playing with just 10 men, it'd be, they're at a huge disadvantage. But of course, when we look back at one match earlier this season, when one of the LA Force's oppo um, opponents were down to 10 men, they actually found a way to make the game interesting. I mean, that was something that, was, that we definitely could not forget. Yep, spaces open up a little bit when you're down to 10. Sometimes it frees up, unlocks something. Matteo Borelli to Matias Mercado. Force are packed in here in their defensive third. Borelli looking for Luis Terran. Will be a throw in for the LA Force. Ivan Hernandez. His long ball going off the head of Sean Sharma. Luis Tehran, perhaps a little bit of miscommunication with Christian Aragon. <laughs> a throw in form via Toro to Leopoldo Placencia. He's having his shirt pulled quite a bit by Agustin Ortiz. He's already on a yellow. Yeah, and he's definitely got to be careful. He got that yellow card in the 33rd minute. He's got to keep his hands to himself, that's for sure, unless he wants to get a second yellow card and be sent off. Now, nice moves from Aldo Quintanilla. Still Quintanilla to Echevarria. Echevarria obviously getting to Rivas on the overlap. The cross, chance in front, but hold on. The flag did come up for offside. Rivas was offside. And the flag came up. That's pretty much all I can say. I don't know, it looked like 33 might have kept him on, but we don't have the VAR, so we'll never know. No VAR, no challenge flags, we just gotta keep playing. No pyro, no party. Sharma to Matias Mercado. Sharma looking to send this one towards Matias Burain. Victor Rojas with a nice touch to bring it down. A Little bit of a mix up between him and one of his teammates. Jose Sosa looking for Quintanilla. He's got Edgar Guzman on him. Still Quintanilla. Now Edwin Rivas, always dangerous with that left foot. Leopoldo Placencia switches the field to Eric Villatoro, the captain, Lomeli. The give and go with Sosa. Lomeli still got it. He will look to cross it exactly what he does. Looks like Cruz had a little bit of, a little bit of trouble with this, trying to head the ball away. So we'll have two minutes of stoppage time. So that basically means two more minutes for the LA Force to try and get that go ahead goal late in the first half. Looking for Toro, obviously a little too much for him. Yeah, ball chipped in over the top for Villatoro. Villatoro, not Francis Avoce, not 6-4. Unable to get to it. He'd have to climb pretty high up to be able to do that. Would be impressive though, nonetheless. The touch from Agustin Ortiz going straight to Edwin Rivas. Rivas had a little bit of trouble. Matias Cruz also having some trouble. Edwin Rivas pokes it away. Sosa plays it back looking for Justin Jovel. And as these crucial moments will we see Leon possibly give the ball away again. That time Echevarria brought down. He's still on the ground. The official says play on. So now the whistle is blown. We will have a momentary uh, stoppage. And we are hearing some we can hear, uh, we have proof of the, some of the frustration taking place on the pitch. We're not going to repeat what's said, but yes, I mean, I think we are having some of the LA Force players being a little upset for a non call, non whistle. Yeah, Chavaria. Slashed at there. 
the assistant referee. Not in the mood. Off the head of Aragon. Sharma with a quick touch. Good awareness, knowing that he obviously knew where Victor Rojas was. And Sean Sharma is a player I really like to mention. He, prior to being with Club de Leon, he had a stint with Gold Star FC, but also with the Western Suburbs FC in New Zealand. And on that note, there is the whistle. End of the first half, we remain scoreless between the Los Angeles Force and Club de Leon FC. We're seeing some players continue the conversation with the referee at the moment. But yeah, no goals. Not a tremendous amount of attacking play yet in this one. But I think we're going to see things open up in the second half. This is Nisa Soccer Action, live on FIFA Plus, brought to you by TV Max. Artif Dakari, along with Dennis Pope, will be back in about 15 minutes for the start of the second half.
Welcome back everybody to Championship Soccer Stadium at Orange County Great Park in beautiful Irvine, California. Starting to get a little chilly. This obviously, I would say good for the players. They're moving around anyways, not an issue. Getting ready to start the second half. LA Force against Club de Leon, 0-0 the score. What can we expect for the second half? Are we gonna, can we expect more of the same early on or do, we think, do you think we're gonna see some change of tactics you know, very quickly, you know, in the first few minutes actually? I think this game is gonna go off the rails on the crazy train. Just like ACDC singing here on the stadium speakers. Uh, I think we're gonna see goals here in the second half. I think uh, the game's gonna open up and there's gonna be one or two mistakes by somebody that's going to lead to a goal. And before I continue, just so you know, ACDC does not sing Crazy Train. It's Ozzy Osbourne. So Thanks for the clarification. No problem. I'm pretty sure our viewers were probably saying the same thing. They were firing off on Twitter already, and you stopped them. I appreciate that, Art. Thank you. No problem. We're ready for the start of the second half. What will we see? The LA Force needs to get three points. This is not a time to start having those... Those, it's not time to start having those results that you really don't need. You know, you're playing some good, you're playing some good football. You're moving the ball around. You're dominating possession. You have more run of play, but then you find yourself just getting those frustrating draws. This is exactly what the LA Force cannot afford to have this late in the season as we get closer to the playoffs. If they want to have a bye that first week, if they want to get a spot, they want to finish in the top two and get that spot in the semifinals, they need to be aggressive. They need to find a way to score. And this is, and we got to see what happens. So yep. we are Sharing the points just kicks the can down the road, creates a problem next week when they have to travel to Gold Star Detroit. Both these teams actually play Gold Star Detroit next. Club de Leon is scheduled to play them midweek. LA Force scheduled to play at Gold Star on Saturday. And it will be a goal kick for the LA Force. And there actually has been a change for the LA Force. Daniel Dorelli is on. Looks like he has replaced Santiago Echevarria as the one substitution made by LA Force to start the second half. So let's keep, learn, learn keep our eyes on you. keep our eyes on Dorelli. Will he provide that spark that this LA Force team needs? Again, in the orange boots up top, wearing the number nine. Gonna get a look at maybe a full 45 minutes from the rally here. So another one of those new members of the LA Force team actually played his college soccer at UCLA with the Bruins. Him and Sosa. So Clayton Torr stepping up nicely, able to get the ball to Quintanilla, but he did he was not able to keep possession as well. Now seeing quite a battle between these teams early on, right from the start of the second half. Physical play continues. Leopoldo Placencia Hernandez to Justin Jovel. Plays it to the outside to Ronaldo Lamelli. Now it's Eric Villatoro with the cross. This could be an opportunity for Dorelli. Still has it, as, has it at, his, at his feet, plays it to the outside to Villatoro, broken up by Aragon. As Club de Leon looked to make a move on the counterattack. Nice play from Justin Jovel. Now actually does win a throw in very nicely for the LA Force. Excellent play out of bounds from Justin Jovel. Snuffing out that attack and winning the ball back. So Santiago Echevarria's night is done. I think from a standpoint of Echevarria, probably a little frustrated to see his night end a little early, but at the same time, you know, this is the mind, you know, the LA Force has that team, that, you know, that teamwork, team player mindset, you know, where someone comes off, another guy comes on, you know, you're hoping for this guy, you're hoping for your teammate to make something happen. Nelly Force not afraid to make changes. We know that. And it doesn't appear doesn't appear as if any changes were made for Lyon, but I think that's not surprising considering their 
limited number of players available on the bench tonight. So now taking the free kick after the offside flag came up, Edgar Guzman looking for Victor Rojas, goes off the head of Edwin Rivas. Sosa had it for a moment, did take a deflection. Jovel able to readjust, finds Eric Villatoro. Looking for Lamelli, broken up nicely by Victor Rojas. Tried to cut it back. Did not have an outlet available to him. Turns away from trouble very nicely. Jose Sosa doing a good job to find Lamelli. Sosa got it back for a moment. Brought down, yes, the whistle is blown. Will be a free kick and a very good position for the LA Force. Yeah, the attack was on. Sosa couldn't keep control, fortunately. Earns a foul. Yeah, this is the most attacking spot LA Force has had for a free kick this evening. And from here, we're just playing the guessing game. Will it be Edwin Rivas? or Aldo Quintanilla. We got the big Halloween pumpkin hovering in the background. So Edwin Rivas, and here it comes, it is a floater. The header, there was a touch, but did take a deflection at the last moment off one of the red shirts. Will be a corner kick for the LA Force, so another set piece opportunity. Tehran with the last touch. Luis Teran, a native of Venezuela. Aldo Quintanilla to take the corner kick for the LA Force. These set piece opportunities are crucial. Did go off of the head of Edwin Rivas. More of a defensive header though. Yeah, I think afterwards his his um his expression, you know, his reaction afterwards pretty much said it all. He was kind of confused, you know, what was he what was he doing? I guess they're kind of asking himself that. Nice work from Justin Jovel. Is that ball from Edgar Guzman. Is headed out of bounds. Will be a throw in for Leon. Matias Cruz with the touch from Rojas back to Cruz. Still a Cruz, needs to do something with it. Ball bouncing around. Matias Purain fouled by Edwin Rivas will be a free kick for Leon. Rivas still showing a little bit of that frustration. We have played 50 minutes, only about five minutes into the second half. We remain scoreless between the LA Force and Club de Leon at Championship Soccer Stadium in Irvine, California. Nisa Soccer Action, live on FIFA Plus, brought to you by TVE Max. A free kick taken by Victor Rojas, high into the air, punched away by Brandon Gomez. Big double punch there from Gomez. Justin Jovel clears it towards Daniel Dorelli as the LA Force players are clearing their lines. Now Dorelli leading this counterattack opportunity. He's got some space. He finds Quintanilla. Quintanilla. Bodied off the ball. Exactly what just took place. I think he was, perhaps he was being a little indecisive in what he wanted to do. Nice move. Nice cheeky back heel. That pass from Aragon to Agustin Ortiz. Returns One, the favor. Yes. Aragon now attempting to cross it towards Purain. Broken up by Ivan Hernandez. We've seen Aragon twice with that little back flip. That definitely oh. is his signature cheeky move for sure. The throw in taken. Ivan Hernandez having a little bit of trouble with it. Actually did lose it. This could be an opportunity. Purain unable to pull the trigger. Does get knocked out of bounds, and it will be a corner kick for Leon, and a dangerous uh, situation. Ivan Hernandez is going to want to clean up those kinds of um, situations from here on out. I know we were talking about it just 10 minutes into the game. This sort of already feels like last week's game against Savannah Clovers. This very much now feels like last week's game against Savannah Clovers. And that game, of course, ended in a 1-1 draw. We'll get back to talking about the previous results in a moment, but first, the corner kick for Club de Leon. Volleyed away by Edwin Rivas. It will be Christian Aragon to take the throw in. Very much a walking pace right now to this match. Burain 
Back to Aragon. The cross from Aragon goes straight off the chest of Clayton Tor. And he clears it out of bounds. And in that game against Savannah Clovers, it was the Savannah Clovers who took a 1-0 lead. But fortunately, Alex Vedamanikam came to the rescue to head the ball into the net. Super sub off the bench. I wonder if we'll see Alex tonight. He's definitely available tonight. But like you said, we have to wait and see if we will see him get a shot. Ronaldo Lomelli switches the field. Was looking initially for Quintanilla. But instead, goes to Rivas. Now Rivas is able to find Quintanilla. Quintanilla looking for an option. He's got Leopoldo Placencia Hernandez. Now to the other side of the pitch, it's Lomelli. Maybe a chance for Jovali shoots. What a save, cleared out of bounds. That was a good opportunity for the LA Force to take the lead. Most well-worked opportunity so far from LA Force tonight. Shot taken from Jovali. Well saved, Omora's on. Diving to his right. So Josue. Mazon with the save. He's not been called into action too many times tonight, but definitely did what he had to do. Showed some great shot stopping skills to deny Justin Jovel. Lomelli taking the pass from Placencia Hernandez. And Justin Jovel, still Jovel. Will he want to take a shot himself? He does. Save is made by Mazon. Jovel's got eyes for goals tonight, though. I like it. And Mazon doing a great job keeping him out. That's two opportunities in a row for Justin Jovel. I think one thing that Leon needs to clean up is you know how much space they allow their opponents. You know, you give that up, you give that space to Justin Jovel, he's going to take advantage of that opportunity. Victor Rojas plays it to the outside. Ball finds its way to Agustin Ortiz. Now Christian Aragon. And Sean Sharma. Earlier mentioned that he played for the Western Suburbs in New Zealand. Definitely an interesting um, you know, overseas stint. But of course, but I like that, but definitely like that. You no know, willing to play basically anywhere to get that experience. A long ball yeah, we played by Via Toro. Brandon Gomez did make sure it did made sure it did not go out of bounds for a corner kick, but you know, kind of a shaky situation there. Yeah, not not the sharpest in the back there. Waiting to get this one back in play. Here's a throw in for Leon. Force need to stay connected here defensively. Aragon. That's Luis Terran. Good battle. Once again, trying to do a little too much on his own. Now Quintanilla trying to start this counterattack. Broken up. This could be an opportunity for Leon. Victor Rojas, will he take a shot? He does. Did take a deflection at the last moment. Good defensive play from Clayton Tor. Will be a corner kick. But as we know, deflections are basically a goalkeeper's biggest enemy. But in that situation, it did not create any trouble for Brandon Gomez. Yeah, momentum is totally against you when there's a deflection as a goalkeeper. Your body's going one way, the ball's going another. It's a nightmare. So a corner kick for Leon. And here it comes high into the air. Headed across, actually goes out of bounds. And when looking back at the, you know, what in the buildup to that corner kick, you know, another giveaway, some careless play from the LA Force. They really got to be mindful of how things are going for them. When they end up playing against some more dangerous opponents, you know, they're going to be punished for those more often than not. Yeah, you got to tighten up in the back. Remember to win your individual battles. And that pass broken up and momentarily looking for Justin Jovel, fortunately able to get the ball to Edwin Rivas. Now it is Quintanilla. Quintanilla to Rivas. The cross, headed away, not out just yet. Mercado had a little bit of trouble with it. Will we see a shot? The save made by Josue Mazon. It will be a corner kick for the LA Force. And that was a shot from Leopoldo Placencia Hernandez. Faked it first time, took it second time. 
Oh, great one-handed save from a zone. So a corner kick for the LA Force. This one going high into the air. It did take a bounce. It was all the way through, though. Will be a goal kick for Leon as we get closer and closer to the hour mark. The hard shot there from Polo. Had eyes. Almost beat Mazon. And Mazon <clears throat> definitely looking calm and collected. And you know, stopping the stopping these opportunities that the LA Force has had in the second half. Yeah, playing indoor will do that to you. Edwin Rivas able to find Aldo Quintanilla. LA Force knocking on the door once again. The cross. Nice play from Matteo Borelli. Will be another corner kick for the LA Force. Rivas on his knees at the moment. Yeah, it looks like the LA Force are preparing to make another substitution. From here, hard to say exactly who that player will be coming in. But for some reason, I'm thinking that perhaps it might be Moja Hale. But that substitution not ready to take place immediately. First, the corner kick from Quintanilla. Volleyed high into the air. Leon players... Pushing up, making sure to clear those lines. After a corner kick, ball goes all the way back to Brandon Gomez. He's got plenty of room, plenty of space. Definitely looking like a sweeper here. Almost at mid the midfield circle. His pass goes straight to Quintanilla. Takes it off the bounce. Clayton Tor to Placencia Hernandez. Back to Tor. Tries to force it. Easy one for Josue Mazon. As we have now played 60 minutes, Matteo Borelli had Rojas for a moment, was not able to possess the ball off the volley. And here comes Quintani, another opportunity. This should be a good chance in front. Putting it just wide is Jose Sosa. None of us can believe it. And everyone else in the stadium with the same feeling. I have, Unbelievable. I have my hands on my head at the moment. How does Sosa miss this? And that's one of those moments where if, we were, if you were watching Univision, this was one of those, se la perdió. I, how did he do that? I, I still don't have, the, I don't know, I don't, I'm speechless. A point blank opportunity for Sosa to come in on his first night and score a goal. And he whiffs. Totally misses the goal. No words. So Leon taking the goal kick, but looks like we will be having that substitution. And it appears that Moja Hale will be coming on for Aldo Quintanilla. If that substitution does indeed take place right now, not really sure what the holdup is. Maybe the official is still wondering, maybe the official is still getting his thoughts collected saying, wait, so that ball did not go in, right? Yeah, he's probably not believing what he just saw either. And, you know, put a circle around that play. You know, that's one that we'll be talking about, especially, I mean, particularly if the LA Force does not pick up the three points tonight. Burain. Plays it to the outside to Matias Cruz. Now it's Victor Rojas with his left foot sending it into the penalty area. Did take some touches and actually will be a corner kick for Leon. Yeah, definitely caught a couple of bodies on the way through. I'm still shaking my head at Sosa missing at the other end. Well, if you're shaking his head, I can only imagine what's going through the head of Jose Sosa. But at this point, he has no choice. He he cannot dwell on that while he's still while he's on the pitch. Yeah, you got to try and be a goldfish. It's hard though to have a human brain and try and be a goldfish. So a corner kick for Leon. And here it comes with the left foot. Rivas quickly getting a touch to it. Now Quintanilla. Wanting to start this counterattack opportunity. He's got Dorelli, the second half sub, who just came on. 
Still Dorelli, can he turn the corner? Can he get a shot off? He does play it across the net. It's knocked in. LA Force takes a one nothing lead. Dorelli keeps the ball at his feet, fends off the defender. He's able to put a left footed cross across the face of goal just for a tap in. It's just that easy. Now LA Force with a one nothing lead. They should have had a goal already. Should have had a lead already at this point, but they finally do. And here we go at the celebration. A little too sweet action. And it looks like it was Aldo Quintanilla to finish off the cross in front of the net to make it 1-0 for the LA Force. Exactly what they needed. I think if there's someone in this stadium who was relieved right now, it has got to be Jose Sosa. And Quintanilla, Nisa's August Player of the Month, continues to produce goals for this side as they attempt to catch Chattanooga from behind. So if this result stands, this jumps LA Force back into second place above Albion San Diego momentarily. And so with the substitution, so Moja Hale comes on for Jose Sosa. Earlier it, appears if, it appeared as if maybe he was going to come on for Aldo Quintanilla. But Quintanilla just scores the goal. You can't take the goal scorer off. Agreed, agreed. So right now, these LA Force players have got to be feeling upbeat about their chances. Still lots of time left, but if they really want to make this game safe, I think it'd be great for them to just go for that knockout blow sooner rather than later. But here come Leon, Matias Cruz, attempting to cross the ball into the penalty area, went off the heel of Clayton Tor, set high into the air. Force are going to have to do the defensive dirty work. To try and make this Aldo. result stand up. Aldo. So, Aldo, Aldo. so Aldo Quintanilla with the goal. And you know, Quintanilla. what a great pass, what a great move from Daniel Dorelli, the second half sub, definitely provided a spark that the LA Force badly needed. Comes on and get, gets an assist in his debut. Mazon did not need to force it, despite the pressure from Daniel Dorelli. Now this will definitely open up the game because Lyon now cannot just keep on sitting behind the ball. They're gonna have to take some they're gonna have to take some more chances. This is obviously will be playing into the favor. This so this is favorable for Leila Forest, but now given away, it's Matias Purain looking for Rojas. Nice defensive play from Edwin Rivas. Able to find Leopoldo Placencia Hernandez to Moja Hale, who just came on. He's got some speed and a set of fresh legs brought down by Matteo Borelli. Will be a free kick for the LA Force. Looks like the referee might be going to his pocket as well. Indeed. So Borelli gets himself in the book in the 67th minute. And a handshake from the referee for his efforts. Yeah. Chops down Moja, who'd played the ball ahead. So Moja Hale just coming on for Jose Sosa. This does two things for Force. It slows the game down, milks some of that time off the clock, and provides an attacking opportunity, chance to double the lead. So a free kick for the LA Force in a pretty good position. Will be taken by Edwin Rivas or Quintanilla. I'm thinking it's more so going to be Quintanilla. Yeah, you want an in-swinger. Give something for the goalkeeper to think about. But I will not be surprised if it's Rivas. So here it comes from Quintanilla. Puts that one on net. Obviously was easy for Josue Mazon. Yeah, no traffic in front to Father Mazon there. But a pretty decent strike from Quintanilla. Now Borelli has his shirt pulled from behind. And now the cards are just going to fly, I think, like we talked about earlier. The referee will continuously try and regain control here. And that time it was Ronaldo Lomelli to get himself in the book. Easy decision for the official. Certainly deserving of a caution. But these behaviors escalate when referees neglect to call games early, call fouls early in games, I should say. So with Moja Hale in, he definitely is. You know, looked for LA Force to be playing 
I would say at times like a 3-4-3 formation or they are they going to want to revert to a type of, of five players in the back? I don't think it'd be wise of them to change that early. I think, you know, we know that phrase, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't think they should be overly conservative just to preserve this one nothing lead because Lyon will have to push up. Spaces are going to open up and it's in their benefit to keep doing what they're doing. Get that second goal, make the game safe then you could bring back that extra defender. We might see them drop into a more of a 4-4-2, but I think we're done with the 5-3-2 the setup. Now, of course, the main attackers for the force, clearly Dorelli, Moja Hale, and Quintanilla. Now given away, Rojas to Purain, just a little too far ahead of him. And we continue to see some of that careless play. We continue to see some of those giveaways the LA Force have got to be very fortunate that they still have a one nothing lead. There's two passes that have been picked off right at the top of the attacking third by Club de Leon, and they just haven't been clinical enough to finish it off. But yeah, mistakes are being made right now by LA Force's back line. Ren Gomez wants everybody to move up. He's going to play it forward himself. And right now it, it, it appears, as we see, you know, not a surprise with Justin Jovo, Leopoldo Plasencia, you know, not make you know, not having any, not making any kind of changes in where they normally play, but Justin Jovel now stepping up, providing a very good ball, but the flag coming up. I'm sure, the LA Force bench was not too thrilled. I was actually in the middle of just saying, no change at all with Leopoldo Placencia Hernandez and Justin Jovel playing as the central midfielders. I think what we are seeing sometimes though is that we've seen Quintanilla playing on the wing, but now he's more like a central attacking midfielder, and actually Ronaldo Lomelli looking more like a right winger mm -hmm. in these last few minutes. You know, to provide that speed and pace at the right wing position. And looks like he's cramping up well behind the play. Look for the LA Force to make another substitution soon. Contini has been doing a lot of running. All right, so you move him centrally. He doesn't have to run quite so much. He's out on the wing. So the flag did come up for offside. Will be a free kick, and looks like we are going to see, uh, yes, we're going to see another substitution for the LA Force, and it appears that it will be Alex Veda Manicam probably to come on for Ronaldo Lomelli because Gabriel Torricelli, the trainer, is coming out onto the pitch to attend to Ronaldo Lomelli. That'll be the substitution. Here's the goal. Tonelli just chips it across. Goalkeeper Mazan not able to get to it. And Quintanilla, Johnny on the spot. Quintanilla continues to lead this club in goals this season. I believe that's his eighth on the campaign. Well, Leon will be making their first substitution of the night. It appears as if Justine Rodriguez Serna will be coming on for Christian Aragon. Bam. Substitution being made by Los That's too bad. I enjoyed Aragon this evening. Some attacking flair. A couple of cheeky back heels. So Alex Vedamanicam has come on for Ronaldo Lamelli. We saw him on the sideline. It made sense that he would be coming on for Lamelli. Lamelli picking up a slight knock. Vedamanic has produced an assist and a goal in his last two substitution appearances. He's made an impact immediately for this team. And here comes Eric Villatoro. There was a push. Turning and trying to shoot was Moja Hale. That was blocked. Here comes Leon. And that pass broken up nicely, taken away by Edwin Rivas. Matteo Borelli knocks it out of bounds. Not sure if that substitution has been made yet for Lyon, but obviously should be coming soon. That's a good ball back to Moja Hale. Not able to win that battle, but Moja Hale does get the ball back. Plays it to Justin Jovel. Now to the outside to Veda Manikam, who just came on. The cross cleared away by Ortiz, but going actually went straight to Leopoldo Placencia Hernandez. Now sent into the penalty area. Went off the back of the head of Borelli. Now losing it. Quintanilla takes a shot, 
That could have been a handball. Moja Hale takes the pass. The cross, some traffic in front. Not out just yet. Moja Hale with the cross once again. Finally, Matias Mercado plays at the outside to Victor Rojas. Charm is still down in the back. Now it's Matias Cruz. There have not been many, there have not been many opportunities tonight for Leon. They have an injured player. If they have an injured player behind the play, I'm sure that's not going to be their biggest concern right now. Christian Aragon to Victor Rojas. Will he want to pull the trigger from far out? He does, but well wide of the goal. Big left-footed blast. I think now, yes, we will finally see that substitution for Leon. We will see Justine Rodriguez Serna coming on for Christian Aragon. This substitution being made in the 74th minute. That last shot on goal definitely came up into the, the hands of the defending player who, you know, defending his own face perhaps. Wasn't called for that, but he definitely brought his hands up. And the ball definitely hit off his hands. So the LA Force with a 1-0 lead. So far the only goal of the night scored by Aldo Quintanilla. That one came in about the 64th minute. A much needed goal for the LA Force. They need all three points tonight. Even if they need to hold on and grind out this victory, three points is three points. And that's the bottom line. Placencia Hernandez with a long ball looking for Veda Manicam. Was Mazon going to have to come out to no man's land? It looks like there was a foul, so will be a free kick for Leon. Matias Mercado to Borelli. Edgar Guzman to Mercado once again. Mateo Borelli looking for perhaps Rojas. Burain brought it down for a moment. And it has been a frustrating night for Lyon. They've really not been able to put together a lot of attacks. And clearly the long ball is not going to work for them. This midfield for LA Force done a good job tonight. It's all Big West Conference. Aldo Quintanilla able to find Veda Manicam. The cross. Very good play from one of the center backs, Matteo Borelli. But actually holding on to the ball way too long. But, at, but did win it back. And here come Leon. Matias Purain just did not get the touch he needed. That could have been a good opportunity. But now, what could have been, here's an opportunity for... The LA Force, Leopoldo Placencia Hernandez plays it to the outside to Veda Manicam. Will he be able to cross it? He does. It's crossed into the air. Takes a bounce. Moja Hale shoots. Did take a deflection on the block. Will be a corner kick for hey. the men in black. Hale on the volley here. Takes it off the chin and just shoots. Huh? LA Force with a number of Free kick opportunities here in the second half. It looks like it will be taken by the goal scorer, Aldo Quintanilla. The LA Force would love to get another goal. It goes straight to Rivas. Did not really get the touch on it that he would have wanted. Leon trying to get a counterattack going. Matias Burain wisely switches the field as he is able to find Rodriguez Serna. The second half sub who just recently came on to replace Christian Aragon. Matias Mercado. Matias Cruz overruns it with the dummy. But actually, Victor Rojas unable to maintain possession. I think that surprised, I think that caught him a bit off guard. Well, Rojas called for it last minute. It was Rojas who wasn't able to control it though. So a little bit of frustration on both sides. Rivas to take the throw in. And he's got Quintanilla. Nice turn from Quintanilla. Was looking for Dorelli. Knocked out of bounds by Matias Cruz. Dorelli with a good touch. He definitely has been a spark tonight for the LA Force. Got to like that move. Matt Morse has got to love that move he made. It's a good signing. 
And we will be seeing another substitution for Lyon. They have more moves to make. They are going to throw more players forward. They're going to take more chances. They got no. They got no other choice. They're down one nothing. Not yeah. a whole lot to lose right now. Third from bottom in the table. And if they want to give themselves a fighting chance at a playoff spot, they've got to take chances. You got. They've got to take risks no matter what. If they end up losing two nothing, you know, if they go down fighting, they go down guns blazing. So be it. But you don't want to just preserve a one nothing loss just to make your goal difference look a little better. Yeah, nothing to be gained for so, Club so, de Leon here. So it looks like Jose Lara will be coming on for Matias Mercado. Club de Leon's limited bench becomes even more a little bit limited. So Jose Lara coming on in the 79th minute for Leon. They're bringing on some fresh legs. They know they've got to do. They know they got to try something. Fresh legs is a good place to start. Just got to find that, get that, find that person the ball. Victor Rojas, some good link up play. Now that's Matias Cruz. He is on side. The cross. Now off the half volley. That was Rodriguez Serna. Gets it back to Matias Cruz. Still Cruz. Wisely able to play it back to Jose Lara, who just came on. To Matias Cruz once again. Now Agustin Ortiz. Still Ortiz. Will he be able to cross it? He cuts it back. He's got Clayton Torr on him. Clayton Torr doing a good job trying to win that battle. Did it last go off of Torr? The referee says no. Will be a goal kick just for the LA Force. Just the referee's pointing to it being a goal kick. You got to say good work by Clayton Tor there to body the attacker off the ball. And 80 minutes have been played. LA Forest with a 1 0 lead over Club de Leon. This is Nisa Soccer Action live on FIFA Plus, brought to you by TVE Max. Artist Akari, along with Dennis Pope, proud to be bringing you tonight's play by play from Championship Soccer Stadium at Orange County Great Park in Irvine, California. These last minutes are going to be tense for the LA Force. They need these three points. There's far more at stake right now for Los Angeles Force. And of course, they're going to want that second insurance goal to clinch this victory. Whistle is bone. There was a foul. Dorelli brought down. Will be a free kick and a good position for the LA Force. But going back to what I was saying, yeah, they're going to want that second insurance goal because with the way this game has gone, one more goal for LA Force and it's game set and match. No disrespect to Club de Leon, but they have not shown enough tonight on the offensive end to show, to say that they will be able to fight back. Or even that they deserve a goal at this point. So once again, it's gonna be Edwin Rivas, or I was gonna say, or Aldo Quintanilla, but from here, yes, it will be Edwin Rivas with that dangerous left foot, the header. Clayton Tor trying to keep it in play. It actually, but it went out of bounds. There's a shoving match now behind the goal. Lazan pushes down Clayton Tor. And now we're getting into it. Polo Placencia getting pushed and touched his head, Victor Rojas. And now Hernandez, it appears that Rojas ju was just taken down. Tempers are flaring. Now this is where the referee really needs to take control really needs to take control and make sure things do not get out of hand. And I would even say more importantly from the standpoint of the LA Force, they need these three points. They cannot let their emotions get the best of them. No, you can't allow Club de Leon to get in your head right here the last 10 minutes. Right, and that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to diminish the game here with some unsavory tactics. Rojas gets a red, oh, excuse me, a yellow. He's wearing red. So, the, so Rojas getting himself in the book in the 83rd minute. I think Ivan Hernandez as well picks up the card. But this is where it started. Tor kicked the ball away and then got shoved down by the keeper. That has been ignored by the referee apparently. Perhaps not. This will add some stoppage time. But of course, I got to piggyback on what you said earlier. The LA Force just cannot let situations like these 
you know, become a problem. They cannot let their emotions get the best of them. You don't want to have that attitude of, hey, you know, one of our teammates got pushed, let's just do nothing. But you've got to be smart more than anything. Like you said, a lot at stake in the remaining minutes of this match. Yeah, far more at stake right now for LA Force. They have to be the ones with the cooler heads and see the finish on this game. And nice dummy play from Quintanilla. Guzman stepping up for a moment. Now Veda Mani Kamali take a shot. Yes, he does. That one going across the six yard box. Goes out of bounds. Will be a goal kick for Leon. Quintanilla just not able to get there at the end. Apply a final touch. Great ball across face of goal though from Veda Manikam. These last concluding minutes of the match should be interesting. But of course, can, will we see the LA Force get that clinching goal to make the game safe? Ball is out of bounds. From, from here, it appeared as if it was barely kept in, but no, barely went over the touch line. It's into touch. And looks like we will see another substitution, perhaps two more actually, for the LA Force. See Gabriel get a little touch there. LA Force keeper. Done an admirable job this season keeping this team healthy as best he can. Early save by Mozan on Jovel's shot. And a good save there by the Club Daily on goalkeeper. He's had a pretty good night and got away with a big shove on Clayton Tor on top of it. Started a fracas. Fans, substitution for your left side goes forth the 85th minute of play. Action match, goal scorer, number 23. So Quintanilla will be coming off. He match, number 19, Quintanilla Michelle with the tap in here on the replay. The ball from Dorelli. So Alex Juarez comes on for Quintanilla. And of course, Quintanilla definitely did his job tonight. Alex Juarez is going to be a, a defensive substitution. Number two, Eric Drop in Eric either Max. to the back line Number or three. in behind in support of Placencia and Jovel. And it appears as if Gonzalo Salguero has came on to replace Toro, And here comes an opportunity. The cross actually went right to Josue Mazon. Yeah, at the near post. Easy pickup from Mazon. Actually, I'm not sure if it was Gonzalo Salguero, but it actually appears as if it could have been Edward Salazar, perhaps. So another, so a double change was made for the LA Force. Like you said, like you said, Alex Suarez coming on, clearly a defensive substitution. But yes, the other substitution, the other player coming on, indeed, yes, was Edward Salazar as he replaced Eric Villatoro, the captain. The captain, of course, definitely had a busy night tonight. Veda Manikam taking the throw in. Daniel Dorelli. Good work keeping it alive. Wins, a, wins another throw in for the force. We're in the 87th minute of play. LA Force with a 1 0 lead. Edward Salazar, who just came on, finds Justin Jovel. Now it is Edwin Rivas. His cross takes a deflection. Justin Jovel trying to win that battle with Jose Lara. Was not easy for him to. And goes out of bounds will be another throw in for the LA Force and Rivas is on the ground momentarily. Looks like he's cramping up a bit. The veteran trying to salt away a little bit of extra seconds here. All right, because Victor Rojas is here to help stretch him out. And definitely a, a quality moment of great sportsmanship from Victor Rojas and helping out Edwin Rivas. Two absolute ballers. Ready to get this one back in the play, Moja Hale. Looking for an option. Here's the run. The touch from Juarez back to Hale. Not really what the force wanted at that moment. 
Ortiz plays it back to Matias Cruz. Now it's Victor Rojas. Not a lot of space on the right sideline. A nice touch from Rodriguez Serna. He has space, he shoots. Brandon Gomez able to stop it. And will take his time in picking it up as he knows time is on the LA Force's side. Nice soft hands from Gomez there. That was a hard shot. And Eustine Rodriguez Serna who just came on Definitely not afraid to pull the trigger and where he was, that was definitely the right thing to do. Now looking for Dorelli, but the flag comes up for offside. But of course went straight to Mazon, so we continue play. Matias Cruz to Jose Lara. Now Victor Rojas. Now it looks like we are seeing the LA Force fall back to playing a little more defensively as the minutes are winding down. That ball sent into the penalty area off the head of Clayton Tor. Justin Jovel actually got his head on it. There's a foul. Yeah, because of the contact. The Leon bench not agreeing with that call at all. Justin Jovel's played great tonight. Had a couple of shots on goal early in the second half. And here he provides a little bit of space and time for LA Force to try and close out this match. Very smart play tonight from Justin Jovel. We should be getting that announcement soon for stoppage time as we are now in the 90th minute of the match. You gotta assume there will be at least three or four minutes of stoppage time. Brandon Gomez taking the free kick, just rips it to the other end of the pitch. And Borelli had a little bit of trouble with it. Does play it back to Mazon. Now it's Matias Cruz. We do have an LA Force player down, but right now Leon is not going to be kicking this ball out of bounds. Rivas again, just laying there. And I think it makes sense for the LA Force bench to have a substitution ready for Rivas. I think he's had a long night. He definitely deserves a rest. Rojas sending this one to the penalty area off the head of Ivan Hernandez. Now Placencia Hernandez rips this one out of bounds. Rivas is up but still grabbing you know, back of his thigh. Burain wins another throw in for Leon. Rivas is done running tonight. And actually the announcement says six minutes of stoppage time. I was way off. Did not see that coming. So these are crucial, a crucial amount of minutes for the LA Force. Our fourth official has indicated a minimum of six minutes of stoppage time will be added the second So Burain with the touch. Matias Cruz, will he want to take a shot from outside? Floats it into the penalty area. Maybe an opportunity. The flag did come up for offside, though. Yeah, a player had floated into an off offside position for Club de Leon. Not sure who that was, but player who had the attempted heel flick. And Rivas is still on the pitch. That was five. His Borelli had floated into offside territory. And with the way he's moving, you know, I mean, if you're Matt Morris, you've got to have, you've got to make that change. And Rivas is, is not look is not looking like 100% right now. Salazar that time was looking for Rivas, and Rivas has it brought down from behind. This will be a yellow card. And that time it was Jose Lara who just came on. This will be a good opportunity to take Rivas off, wouldn't it? I definitely would have to agree there. Even injured, he still earns a yellow card foul. That's pretty impressive. But with Rivas on the ground now, this will surely add maybe a little bit more stoppage time. Rivas attended to with some water. It means he'll have to come off for, he'll have to come off for a little bit. Will he be replaced in the lineup? That's a good question. And it looks like you have the Leon bench asking why is the wider Rivas not go to the sideline if he was attended to. I think we're asking ourselves that same question as well. Well, because the foul was call called initially. The stoppage wasn't called for the player being down. Okay, well, I'm glad we got that. Glad I got that clarification. Ball is back in the play. Time definitely running out for Leon. LA Force, of course, just want this game to be over as fast as possible. They have a 1-0 lead. They need these valuable three points. 
If anything were to go wrong in these final few minutes, it would be a disaster. And that long ball going off the head of Matteo Borelli, and he was uh, flagged for offside. It's two times in the last two minutes, Borelli's tried to get himself into the attack and just turn the ball over. Gomez in no hurry, of course, to restart play. Yeah, he'd have to people have to have to wonder what he's thinking to get this in play, you know, as fast as possible. And Brandon Gomez rips it down the pitch, headed into the air. Placencia Hernandez trying to bring it down, and studs he's fouled. Up. Player came in, studs up, and the LA Force bench irate after what just took place. And mass confrontation in front of the referee now. And there is a yellow card given, and this is where Matias Purain needs to take a step back. So it looks like a yellow card to Agustin Ortiz and one to Purain. There's one for Purain and a red card as well. He's been sent off for dissent or unsportsmanlike mm -hmm. conduct. Now what I'm wondering, is that red card to Purain or was it a second yellow no. card to Agustin Ortiz? Because Ortiz has already been carded early in the you know in the 33rd minute. I think Porain just got back-to-back -back yellow cards and then... Caution issued on a double yellow, number 27. Yeah. Up close to the yellow. Well, right now there's some there is some confusion. I mean, who is being sent off? He's done Three listening to Porain. He's sending him off. There. Number 23. Mateus Porain. And we were just talking earlier how he hadn't seen a red card in a bit. Well, this late in the game, well, at least it was at least it's a change from what we saw other times. Yeah, 27 came in, studs on to Polo's knee. And if that's, and I just want to say, if that's Ortiz, he's already been yellow carded. But I mean, I guess he wasn't caught. I guess he was not given nope. the yellow card for that referee, foul. Referee still has the red card in his hand. Yep, he's been sent off. Okay, so now they're now Leon is down to nine men. They're down one nothing. This definitely should be it. This should be the three points for the LA Force. CDL is self-destructed here in stoppage time. So Club de Leon wearing red. Two players have just been shown the red cards. So they're down to nine men. This will add some more stoppage time. But this should be the LA4 securing this victory or at least finding another goal to put on the finishing touches. Ball is back in the play finally after those stoppages. Matias Purain was sent off, so was Agustin Ortiz for receiving his second yellow card. Daniel Dorelli taking the ball to the corner and he's fouled, actually will, be, uh, actually will belong to Leon. And Leon, of course, is trying to throw this ball forward as fast as possible. Not sure what they really have in, pl what, what kind of plan they have in store. They're playing with a two man disadvantage. Sent up the field, but straight to Alex Veda Manikam. And the LA Forest can pretty much just play keep away the rest of this match, having a two man advantage, but given away straight to Victor Rojas. Now, Matteo Borelli. And that ball sent out of bounds by Edward Salazar will be a throw in for Leon. And they have no choice but to send everyone up. Yes, they're playing with nine men, but they've got to do something. We're about to come into the 98th minute here. Losing one, whether you lose one nothing or two nothing, there is no difference at this point for Leon. Edgar Guzman had to go up into the stands to get the ball to take the throw in. And Victor Rojas taken down from behind by Veda Manikam will be a free kick for Lyon. Perhaps their last, perhaps their last opportunity of the match. Can't imagine them really getting another opportunity after this. I know more stoppage time will probably have to be added, but have, have a look now. Josue Mazon, the keeper, going all the way into the penalty area for this last gasp free kick. Keepers in the box. So here it comes into the penalty area, straight to Brandon Gomez. He falls to the ground. And Mazon, of course, going to have to hurry back. 
Brandon Gomez rolls it out, but there is the final whistle. A 1-0 victory for the LA Force over Club de Leon. Only goal of the match scored by Aldo Quintanilla. Force fortunate to walk away with three points tonight. They missed an opportunity down here at the end, a point blank chance. Turns out they get another one, and Aldo Quintanilla is able to finish it off from just an easy tap in off the pass from the new player, Daniel Dorelli. Here it is, the game winner. Aldo Quintanilla continues to score goals for this LA Force team, and they walk away tonight with a 1 0 victory and three points, and they leapfrog Albi and San Diego into second place in the Nisa standings. A huge win for the Los Angeles Force over Club de Leon. It basically turned into a grinded out victory at the end. There were some players being sent off at the end, but overall, a deserved victory for the LA Force. A huge one nothing win. They can enjoy this victory for the time being. Of course, they'll have to get back to work as soon as they get back onto the training field. Yep, they go back, uh, they'll play Saturday at Gold Star Detroit will be LA Force next match. So once again, everyone, that's it from Championships